Hello everybody. Today I want to teach you about fasting, the great lost art of the New Testament church. Man, I am so excited about this one. I really can't describe it fully. But before I get into it, uh, I want to introduce myself. My name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the privilege of pastoring the group of people called Lifeline Church. You can probably see the name right up here. This is Lifeline Church. That's right. Our mission at Lifeline is to be a lifeline by leading people to becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. And this message is going to help you do that and accomplish that. I believe that wherever you're watching from today, whether you're uh, a part of our church or whether you're just tuning in, maybe a friend comes here and you're just catching it, or maybe you're just randomly seeing this somehow, I believe that you're not watching by accident, but that you are here for a purpose and that God wants to speak a message of hope, encouragement, and love into your life today. This is so important today. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to get into it. I'm so excited, but I'm going to get into it in a second. Um, as always, if you would be so kind as to like, comment, and share wherever you're at, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, wherever you're watching this at, a like goes a long way, a comment goes a long way, just say, hi, I'm here, and a share goes a long way to help get the word out so that we can, so that we can really uh, get this thing going and let people know, man, that there is a life-giving message from God uh, for everybody who would hear. So today I want to read you a story out of the Bible about life, death, and fasting. In fact, the title of this message today is Fasting is Life and Death. <laughs> fasting is life and death. And that's, that's very true because every single person in, who's watching, every single one of you probably has something in our life that A, needs to die, and B, needs to get brought to life, and C, fasting and prayer is the answer to that. Fasting and prayer is the answer to that. Why am I talking about fasting right now? Because this Sunday coming up, the 2nd, August 2nd, so this is Wednesday, the, I know what day it is, the 29th, Wednesday the 29th, and then this Sunday coming up, we're going to be doing prayer and fasting together as a church for 21 days. And so I wanted to give you a bit of a heads up and, and kind of walk you through um, this, this, especially this story in the Bible that is, a lot of people don't think about fasting when it comes to this story, um, but uh, maybe you don't know this about me, and fasting is very important to me, as you can tell, very excited about it, but whenever something happens in my life, like maybe something really bad happens, maybe you don't think that me being a pastor, anything bad ever happens, but bad things happen to me too, and one of my first response, one of my first responses whenever anything crazy or bad or, you know, I just need breakthrough in an area. Many people don't know this about me, but one of my first responses is always to fast, whether it's a day, three days, you know, whatever, if I give up food or if I give up social media or if I give up something else, you know, meat or I've done so many different random kinds of fasts that I really can't keep track of them all, but I always, that's like my first instinctual thing my, and it's to fast to fast because I know, I know that fasting can A, kill things that need to die, B, bring things to life that need to get brought to life, and because fasting does that. Fasting, fasting absolutely leads to breakthrough. So what is fasting? First of all, fasting is giving up something for an extended period of time that is spiritually related, for a spiritual reason. So it's not a diet, you know, a lot of people go on diets, but not a lot of people fast. And there is a fasting diet, I understand that, but the term comes from the Bible. It's a spiritual term. To, to fast is to give something up for a spiritual reason. So it's not just like, hey, you know, I'm gonna try to lose some weight up in here. I'm gonna try and, you know, quarantine 19 pounds. So I'm gonna try, oh, I'm gonna get in on this fast. I'm gonna lose some weight. That may be like a side benefit, but it is not the reason that we fast. The reason is we want to see breakthrough in our life. And, and Sunday, I'm going to answer, hopefully, all of your questions, all of the questions that could ever be asked about fasting, but maybe just, hopefully, your questions about fasting. This Sunday, I'm going to break it all down 
step by step, and I prepared something special for you today that I just don't think many people realize how important fasting can be. So it's in the notes, it's in the description of wherever you're watching at, but we're gonna be reading out of 2 Samuel um, chapter 12. And there's a story in chapters 11 and 12, uh, 2 Samuel, uh, if you've read your Bible through, you might recognize this as the time where King David slept with Bathsheba, who was Uriah's wife, and then he got her pregnant, and then he killed Uriah to cover up the fact that he knocked up somebody else's wife. This is King David, the spiritual leader of the, the spiritual and practical leader of the nation of Israel, did all that. And so it was pretty bad, pretty bad few days for Mr. David. Um, and that's all found in, in uh, 2 Samuel, starting in chapter 11. But what I want to read you is when um, the prophet, the prophet um, Nathan comes, comes to David and says, Hey, dude, you're busted. And I know what you did. And there was, he tells him a story. There was this king who had all the sheep and instead of, uh, preparing the sheep as a meal for his friend. Instead, he stole the only sheep that this poor man had. And David was all mad like, how could that guy do that? But that was exactly what David did. David had lots of wives. Back then, that was a thing. Trust me, men, you don't, you don't want that to be a thing today. <laughs> but David, instead of sleeping with one of his own wives, went and got somebody else's wife Uriah's only wife, and took her, slept with her, and then killed him. So, And David, when he heard the parable that was about sheep, he was outraged. But Nathan said, dude, that's you. He, he probably didn't say, dude, that didn't, that didn't come out for a couple more years. But he said, that's you. You took Uriah's wife, his only wife, and he loved his wife with all his heart. And you stole her from him and killed him and slept with her. How could you do that? And then I'm going to read this whole story. So it's only going to take a minute. Really, it's, I don't know, like 15 verses. But it starts in 2 Samuel chapter 12, starting in verse 13. Then David confessed to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Uh, you think? Yeah, yeah, you have. Nathan replied, yes, but the Lord has forgiven you and you won't die for this sin. That's good. Verse 14, nevertheless, because you have shown utter contempt for the word of the Lord, by doing this, your child will die. So he knocked up Bathsheba, she was pregnant, and that child was not gonna live. That was of the flesh. That action and that baby was an act of the flesh, like Ishmael, I'm talking to like some Bible scholars up in here, if you know about Ishmael, you know, that's, that's of the flesh, and, that, and God says, that, that baby's not gonna make it. That baby's not gonna make it. And verse 15 goes on to say, yeah, after your child will die, verse 15, and Nathan returned to his home and the Lord sent a deadly illness to the child of David, Uriah's wife. Still calls him Uriah's wife, man, what a sting. <laughs> David begged God to spare the child. He went without, here it is, he went without food and lay all night on the bare ground. So he, what did he do? He fasted, David fasted. He's like, no, no, I don't want this child to die. This, I want this child to live so bad. And so he gave up food right then and there. His response was to fast and lay all night on the bare ground. The elders, verse 17, the elders of his household pleaded with him to get up and eat with them, but he refused. He's like, no, I'm gonna fast, I'm gonna try and, uh. Verse 18, then on the seventh day, so it's insinuated here that David fasted for seven days without food. It doesn't say that explicitly, but it, it sure seems that way. But on the seventh day, the child died. David's advisors were afraid to tell him, man, if David, has been laying on the ground and not eating for seven days and the child's still alive, what's he gonna do figuring out that, he's, that the child died? David's advisors were afraid to tell him. He wouldn't listen to reason while the child was ill, they said. What drastic thing will he do when we tell him the child is dead? When David saw the whispering, he realized what had happened. Is the child dead? He asked. Yes, they replied, he is dead. Verse 20. Then David got up from the ground, washed himself, put on lotions, because he he's a mess, you know, he hadn't been eaten, probably hasn't washed himself. He put on lotions, changed his clothes, went to the tabernacle, worshiped the Lord, 
And after that, he returned to the palace and was served food and ate. <laughs> Verse 21, his advisors were like, <laughs> let me just read. Verse 21, the advisors were amazed. They said, we don't understand you. <laughs> we don't understand you, they told him. While the child was living, you wept and refused to eat. But now the child is dead and you've stopped your mourning and are eating again. This is profound. Verse 22, David replied, I fasted and wept while the child was alive. For I said, perhaps the Lord will be gracious to me and let the child live. But remember that that was of the flesh. That was something of the flesh that, that God was, was showing him and ultimately us that what's of the flesh really needs to, needs to go. But at verse 22 says, but why should I fast when he is dead? Can I bring him back to life again? I will go to him one day, but he cannot return to me. And that's, that's really comforting for anybody who's ever lost a loved one or maybe lost a baby. The Bible is telling us here that, that you know, when we die and go to heaven, that we actually will see those children. What does that look like exactly? Man, I'm not, I don't know everything. Okay, I'm just reading the Bible to you. But it says here that David said, we, we're going to see, he said, I'm going to see that baby again. One day. Not today, but one day. Okay, and then it says, perhaps the Lord be gracious to me. Why can't I bring him back again? I go to him one day, but he can't return to me. And then this is really like what the whole message is about is this last verse. Then David comforted Bathsheba, comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and slept with her. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son, and David named him Solomon. Solomon, the wisest king that ever lived, the wisest person that ever lived, the, su the successor of, of David's throne was born after seven days of fasting. And after what was of the flesh died, something of the spirit was born immediately after. Solomon was Bathsheba's son. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that Solomon was born at the end of the most tragic week, maybe, of David's life. This is when David wrote Psalm 51. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Many of you know Psalm 51. You know that that was written during this time when David was mourning probably more than he's ever mourned before, when he lost that baby. We don't know the baby's name. It was never born. But Solomon, the pride and joy of the nation of Israel, the one who built the tabernacle of the Lord, the wisest king, wrote Proverbs, the book of Proverbs that we love so much was born after a seven day fast and after the worst season that David ever faced. My point is this about fasting. When you fast seeking spiritual intervention for your life, like David, what is of the flesh dies and what is of the spirit is born. So, okay, okay, okay. So we're starting a fast together, church, on the second, this Sunday coming up. And I hope, and I hope, I hope that you lean into this. I hope that you, because we've never needed a fast and, and a prayer session like we've, like we've needed one in our nation and in our own lives. Over the whole world, right now, we need it so bad. So what should we do? What's the to-do, Elliot? What should we do about this? I want you to show up this Sunday, whether online, or in person, you can tune in on Facebook, or you can show up and sit outside. We've got the TVs, it's all real nice, nice and shaded, you can come. Um, and I don't usually shamelessly promote a Sunday, coming on a Sunday, but this Sunday is very, very important. I think that this could be the most important fast that we may ever engage in as a church because of the situation that we're in as a world and as a nation. And your own life. How many of us, after being quarantined for so long, are just, man, of what's of the flesh needs to die right now. I need it to die right now. And we need something new of the Spirit. We need a Solomon born in our life. 
We need wisdom born in our life. And it's waiting on the other side of fasting and praying. It's so important. Now there's different kinds of fasts you can engage with. Now I'm not saying you have to like stop eating cold turkey. I'm gonna do a seven day fast. I'm gonna not eat food for seven days. And that's like, that's really all my body can handle. After seven days I start to get, well Tiffany encourages me to, to start eating again after the seventh day. But that's what I'm gonna do. You don't have to do that. You can give up something else. You can go to our website, lifelinelodi.com and there's different kinds of fasts listed on there. Maybe a soul fast, like giving up social media, giving up, really it's giving up just about anything with the intent of spiritual renewal and breakthrough. Giving up anything, like to broaden the, the term of fasting, there are many different kinds of fasts in the Bible. But just to make it inclusive for every single person, every single one of you, no matter what level you're at, maybe you just got saved today, maybe you just got saved last week, maybe you've been saved for 20 years, doesn't matter. You can engage with a fast with us and I'm promising you that you're gonna experience breakthrough. Come this Sunday and start the fast with us. Do something. Go on our website. I'm, I'm gonna do seven days. Me personally, I'm gonna give up food for seven days. I'm gonna drink water and coffee for those seven days only, no solid food. And then for four, the other 14 days, I'm gonna do something else. I don't even know what yet. I'll talk to Tiffany about it. But you can do what, and come expecting expect, expect, expect that God is going to bring breakthrough and a Solomon is going to be born in your life. I'm not talking about a literal baby. I'm talking about a spiritual breakthrough is going to happen in your life if you engage with us. Can you see why I'm so excited? Like, and this is so tied in with Sunday. So you're watching on Wednesday night or maybe right after that. And I'm going to even wear the same outfit. Like it's the same, it's the same thing. Like this is so important. This whole week's theme is fasting. And, and this Sunday we're going to start it together. So join us for that fast and expect a breakthrough. My point is this, when you fast, seeking spiritual intervention in your life, what's of the flesh dies and what's of the spirit is born. I hope this blessed you today and I sincerely hope whether online or in person, you join us this Sunday. It's gonna be so powerful and you're gonna be, even just coming, you're gonna be so blessed by this message. I'm gonna answer every single question known to man about fasting. <laughs> Maybe hopefully every single question you have <laughs> and if you have any other questions about fasting, you can always message the church. We'll get back to you there. Season of fasting and prayer and spiritual renewal in your life. Remember to go to lifelinelodi.com to look at the different kinds of fasting that are available for no matter what level you're at. Um, there is a kind of fasting that you can engage with that's just right for you. And ask the Lord, Lord, how do you want me to engage? You're going to do a partial fast, selective fast. I'm going to talk about all of these on Sunday. And you can also read on the website online right now. And you can use any of the links in the description of this video to help connect with us. You never know when your next step is gonna be your next breakthrough. And so go ahead and click any of those links to, to see your life take off in the direction that God wants it to go. And if, again, finally, if this content helped you today, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing this so that we can get this life-giving message out to as many people as humanly and spiritually possible. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you today. I'm grateful and thankful for every single person listening to this message today. I pray that they would be blessed and I pray that they would be given the courage. Lord, give us the courage to engage in this fast and the expectancy to experience breakthrough in the 21 days that we're going to be engaging in this and that our lives will never be the same ever again. And when we lean into this and when we give up something temporarily, we can gain something eternally. Lord, bless your people, bless this nation, bless, bless your world, and bring many people unto your salvation. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you. And we will see you again very soon.